time, I must visit the Modi Ustahat Free Library. Today, there are thousands of satellites orbiting the Earth. There are rockets that can blast off into space, the moon, and beyond. But that wasn't always the case. It took the hard work of engineers and mathematicians to be able to create the spaceships that can travel to outer space. One of those early engineers was a woman named Mary Golda Ross. As a young girl, Mary Golda Ross loved math at a time in history when girls were not expected to excel in math and science, but she did. She grew up to be the first woman engineer to work on a secret team focused on space travel. At that time, space travel seemed impossible, or so they thought. And today I'll share her story with you called Classified. That means it was a secret. The secret career of Mary Golda Ross, Cherokee aerospace engineer. Now, Mary Golda Ross was also a member of the Cherokee Nation, whose values helped her succeed. Then you can make your own paper rocket and then get ready to blast off and count down from 10 to 1 in the Cherokee language. So let's get started with Classified, the secret career of Mary Golda Ross, Cherokee Aerospace Engineer. Classified, the secret career of Mary Golda Ross, Cherokee Aerospace Engineer, written by Tracy Sorrell, illustrated by Natasha Donovan, and published by Mill Book Press. Mary Golda Ross's parents instilled the Cherokee tribe's values in their children. Some of the values that shaped Mary included gaining skills in all areas of life, both within and outside the classroom, working cooperatively with others, remaining humble even when others recognize your talents, and helping ensure equal education and opportunity for all. Young Mary Golda Ross pushed her pencil across the page. Puzzling out math equations made her happy. The teenage girls in the 1920s weren't expected to enjoy or excel in math and science. But Mary did, and she blazed a trail for others. In the hills of northeastern Oklahoma, Mary's Cherokee tribe provided education for everyone. Her great-great-grandfather, John Ross, had served as principal chief of the Cherokee Nation. He helped create a school that later became a state's teacher college, which Mary began attending at the age of 16. When the boys refused to sit next to the only girl in math class, Mary felt motivated to get better grades than they did. And she didn't stop there. Holding true to her tribe's belief about gaining life skills in all areas, Mary took advantage of every opportunity to learn. In college, she majored in math, believing that the world is so technical, if you plan to work in it, a math background will let you go farther and faster. After graduation, Mary taught math and science to high school students. Even then, she saw more ways to grow and contribute. Mary moved to Washington, D.C., where a supervisor at the Bureau of Indian Affairs noticed her talent. She was then hired to be the girls' advisor at the Bureau's co-ed boarding school in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Mary soon found that others outside the classroom needed her math and science knowledge, too. After the United States entered World War II in 1941, Mary left her teaching career and moved once again, this time to Los Angeles, California. Mary got a job as a mathematician 
for the Lockheed Aircraft Corporation. She helped solve a design problem affecting the safe operation of the P-38 Lightning Fighter, one of Lockheed's fast-flying planes, and she enjoyed the research. Now, she wanted to design and build aircraft and spacecraft as an engineer. At that time, only men served as engineers in the large corporation. Mary thought back to when she was the lone girl in her math and science classes. She wasn't intimidated, but she knew she needed more training. So Mary focused. The company helped her take engineering classes at a nearby university. She had to balance her job duties and homework. Would the men Mary worked with accept her as their equal? They did. Mary became Lockheed's first female engineer and helped other women join the field. She modeled the Cherokee value of working together in mind and heart. She shared her knowledge and asked questions to improve designs. Her male colleagues respected her intellect, her drive to solve problems, and how she worked in the team. None of them realized, though, what would come next. The race between the United States and the Soviet Union to reach outer space sped up. The company selected Mary to be one of 40 engineers in a super secret work team. Mary described their mission as taking the theoretical and making it real. What did that even mean? It meant Mary worked on projects that people had only imagined, and some no one had even thought of before. No vessel had ever flown nonstop around Earth, with or without a pilot. Flying beyond Earth? Well, that seemed impossible. Determined, she and her colleagues would figure out how to do it. When Mary accepted the invitation to join Lockheed's top secret group, known as Skunk Works Division, she knew most of her work would be classified, which means a secret. Today, a lot of it still is. When Mary appeared on a Guess My Job TV game show, she surprised the host when her line of work was finally revealed. Even though Mary worked on world-changing projects, she never sought the spotlight. Along with her colleagues, Mary researched orbiting satellites, like those that monitor weather patterns and send signals to televisions. She designed concepts for space travel to Venus and Mars. Her important work on spacecraft later helped the Apollo space program send astronauts to the moon. But what if nobody ever knew her name or recognized her as the important engineer she was? That didn't matter to Mary. Her life reflected another Cherokee value, humility. Mary never bragged or drew attention to her skills. Her work, including helping to put a man on the moon, spoke for itself. Whenever Mary received awards, she always thanked her colleagues because she knew no one person deserved credit for what everyone had done together. In her quiet way, Mary kept right on blazing a trail for others to follow for the rest of her life. Although her work was classified, which meant secret, Mary still had much to share. She never stopped recruiting American Indians and young women to study math and science, helping support them to become engineers. Mary's work and her legacy of service have helped many others become trailblazers, too. A quote from Mary Golda Ross. Do the best you can and search out available knowledge and build on it. I started with a firm foundation in mathematics and qualities that came down to me from my Indian heritage. The End 
you can check out this book at the library for more interesting information about Mary Golda Ross. Mary Golda Ross sure accomplished a lot. She continues to be honored and remembered for her contributions. Here she is standing next to a model of a space rocket and at the opening of the National Museum of the American Indian. In 2019, Mary Golda Ross was featured on the Dollar Coin, which was dedicated to American Indians in the space program. Part of Mary Golda Ross's job was to figure out how to get planes and other aircraft to fly. So let's make a straw paper rocket. You probably made these before, or maybe you discovered it when you were opening a paper covered straw. You can make your own, it's easy to do and fun, and there's more than one way to do it. So you can start out by designing your straw super easy because all you'll need is a straw, some paper, and tape, and probably some scissors to cut your paper. So what you want to do is start with a rectangular shape of paper. It doesn't have to be very big, just uh, wide enough to cover the circumference of your, the outside of your um, straw right here. And then you're going to wrap it around your straw and then tape it together. Don't tape it to the straw, tape it to the, the paper. And then you're going to take the end, fold it over, and just add a little bit of tape at the end. Now you can make it your straw a little bit more fancy and I'll include a link in the description box below from NASA where you can add some fins to it to change your design or you can even just add a little paper rocket that you drew to it to spiffy it up and then test it out to see if it flies. <laughs> and then you can go ahead and get ready to blast off. Have you ever seen a rocket launch? Well, at, right before the rocket takes off, there's a final countdown from 10 to 1. Let's take a look. For T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. We have to go from ready to start. 2, 1, 0. Booster ignition and liftoff of Shuttle Endeavour with NASA's final space station crew compartment that brings a bay window view to our celestial backyard. Today, in honor of Mary Golda Ross, let's count down in the Cherokee language. Author Tracy Sorrell has nicely put these files on her website to help you count down with her. Let's take a look. The link in the description box below will take you to the author Tracy Sorrell's webpage where you can try to count down from 10 to 1 before you blast off your rocket. And you see right here, the word is in English, countdown. And there's the written Cherokee language in the syllabary right there. And there's a phonetic uh, spelling of the word. So you could press the file right here. He a di da seka countdown. And then count down from 10 to 1 before you blast off your rocket, just like this. Score he. 10 and so on. So keep counting down and then try your hand at saying the Cherokee numbers and have a blast. The Cherokee language is still spoken today. I hope you'll explore the other words and information on the author's website. It's very interesting. And I hope you check out this book to learn more about Mary Golda Ross and stop by the library to choose some books to learn more about the Cherokee Nation and the many other Native nations. I'll put a link in the description box below to just a few of the available books, including a link to Miss Melissa's video about another book by this author. I hope you keep exploring, keep learning, and we'll see you next time. Bye.